Hi everyone and welcome to my Part 2, I'll be the street. So in here, uh, the topic will be about introductory concepts of antiderivatives or integrals. So let's start with the, the intended learning outcomes and the outline of the topics. So after the end of this module, we can evaluate a definite integral using the Riemann sum. Evaluate the definite integrals as an area under the curve. Conceptualize the properties of definite and indefinite integrals. Solve integral of polynomial and trigonometric functions. Solve integration problems using new substitution. Evaluate the integral of other given functions. And evaluate uh, definite integrals with change of limits. So the outline could be seen here, but we will only focus uh, for now uh, with uh, the first uh, two. Or I think we can do this thing. Okay. So uh, let's start with the area problem. Okay. So how do we find the area of a given shape? So for rectangles, that will be relatively easy. As long as we know that it is a rectangle, we will just find the length and the width. If it is a parallelogram, we could find the height and the length. For triangles, we have this formula, one half base times height. And for regular polygons, usually we could divide these polygons into triangles. So that is the nature of uh, finding the area of a given shape. The problem with this is what if we have a curve? How do we find the area of a curve? Uh, curved shape, a region, no? or let's call this the region S. So, let's imagine something. Let's say we have a given function. Let's create an arbitrary function here. It could be anything. No? So let's say this is our function, which we will call here this f of x function. I think here f of x. So let's say we want to figure out what is the area under this function. So let's say we want to figure out what could be the area of this region here. So we want to determine this portion. This portion or what is the area of that portion. So let's annotate this first. So let's say this is from uh, this uh, x is equal to a and x is equal to b. Okay. Okay, I think this is complete for now. Now, how do we do this? How do we really find the area? So, since this is arbitrary, we do not know the function. It could be any function that is curved. So, what we could do here is to you know, approximate. We could approximate the area of this, uh, this portion or this region using rectangles and let's just say we want to utilize or we could divide this we could divide this region into three so you can see here that we could create a rectangle here no? okay so be mindful of how i draw my rectangles and then i maybe i could write a rectangle here as well and then maybe i could write a rectangle here so this is the approximation of the area under this curve and this will be a sum of three rectangles which could be let's say area one area two and area three okay so the area the total area will be approximately equal to so we are just estimating we will not get this exactly as you can see we have this overlap and this underlap here so how do we do this okay so we want to first figure out what is the Okay, so our area will have a length and width since this is a rectangle. So we have here a length and a width, or let's just call this a base and height. So we have this base here and this height here, right? So how do we find this base and height here? So we have three rectangles. Let me just write this down first. So how do we know what is this uh, base and what is this height? 
Okay, so what we could do here based on our graph, since this point, as you can see, is an intersection of this function. Therefore, the coordinate of this will be x, let's, let's call this x sub 1, for example, no? and f of x sub 1 will be the height, right? So the height of this will be, so the height of this will be f of x sub 1, and then the coordinate of that is x sub 1. But we are interested in this distance here, right? So we divided this by 3. How do we get this, this uh, base here? Okay, we could create here uh, an equation to know what is this. Let's just call this delta x. So this distance here, delta x, and then delta x. So an equal distribution of intervals. So the delta x will be equal to, okay? So we divided this by 3, and the total distance of this will be, so this is A, right? And this is B. So this is the difference between B and A. So to make things general, instead of, uh, writing here 3, I'll just say that this is n. So the n number of intervals or the number of rectangles will be n. So another one. Uh, sorry, uh, to continue this, we already have here a delta x and our m of x sub 1, right? So for the other one, it will also be delta x. And this one will be, so uh, what will be this uh, coordinate? So the coordinate here, since this is uh, another x, no? so this will be your new x. No? So this will be x of 2. And x of 2 will be x of 1 plus delta x, right? Now you can also write it uh, in this way. Okay? And then therefore we have here x of 2, and then the height will be f of x sub 2. So we have here a height of f of x sub 2. Okay, for the third area, we have again delta x, delta x for the base, and then this point will be x sub 3, no? So x sub 3, that will be x, uh, x sub 2 plus delta x, okay? So we have your f of x sub 3 for this height. Okay, so we can write this down as an area, so we multiply this one by one. We have f of x sub 1 times delta x plus f of x sub 2 times delta x plus f of x sub 3 times delta x. Okay, so as you can see here, we can factor out this delta x, right? And we could generalize this, this uh, approximation by using a summation notation. So let's say we want to divide this by 1 million rectangles or 100 rectangles, okay? So we could create a uh, annotation uh, to make things more general, which will be this combination notation. So from i is equal to 1 up to n, which will be the number of, uh, sorry, not n is equal to 1, but n. <laughs> that will be f of x sub i and that x. So this is just a compact representation of this thing when n is equal to 3. Okay, so when n is equal to 3, uh, this will be your expansion. Okay, is that clear? I hope that is clear. So, imagining this, let's say we can divide this. Sorry, I didn't write this down. Let's say we can divide this rectangle or this region by a very high or a, at a very large amount. Now, instead of just 3, divide this by 10, or by 100, by 1 million, or infinitely. So what if your n is infinite? Now, so we could divide this by uh, infinite rectangles. So you can imagine that if we incorporate more rectangles, we will have a better approximation of the area. And that is basically an integral. No? So the area will be equal to no? the limit as n approaches infinity of this summation. 
Okay? Of destination. Okay? So that is basically the definition of the area. And also the integral. No? So this is subject to, no? Subject to uh, delta x is equal to b minus a over n. So if this delta, sorry, if this n is approaching to infinity, therefore, delta x will be approaching zero. Sorry, approaching zero. Okay? So as you can see here, if you add more rectangles, the delta x will get smaller and smaller. And this, this is basically the definition of an integral, which is the limit from a to b of f of x dx. Okay? So remember this. Yeah. So this is the definition of an integral. And what we did right here is called the Riemann sum. To be exact, the left Riemann sum. But anyways, in general, this is just the Riemann sum. Okay, so if you have a given function and a given interval, A and B, you could find the area under that curve. And that is the integral. So relating this to differential calculus, if you remember differential calculus, when we say difference, we're talking about changes or rates, right? so change in time, which is difference between time, rates, which are uh, the sensitivities no? of uh, some variable to another variable, which are differences. When we're talking about integrals, we're talking about sums. So in contrast to differences, no? Sums, which is also this infinite sum. And where did this symbol came from? This is actually an S. This integral symbol is actually an S. Okay? So remember this one. Okay, so that will be all for this. So if we want to visualize this problem, I have a small widget here to see. Now let's say you have a given function. Let's have this complicated function sine 2x minus x squared over 10 plus e. And we want to figure out the area between x but 1, x but 5. So as you can see here, we can do we can try uh, doing the Riemann sum to approximate the area. So the left hand sum, the left hand sum or the approximate area that we can calculate will be 9.86. But the true area here will be 8.80. And let's say we add more uh, intervals or we divide this by more rectangles we get a better and better approximation of the area. And basically, if n approaches infinity, it will get closer to this 8.08. Again, no? so uh, the intervals, oh, from the interval of let's say 4, if we add more rectangles, the approximation gets better and better. And if n approaches infinity, it will get closer to this true area, which is 8.08. Okay. So let's have an, uh, another or uh, uh, a summary of what we just discussed uh, on the previous slide. So given a function f that is integrable, because it's integrable at the interval a and b, then uh, the limit as n approaches infinity of this function, well, as we did last time, is just the definite integral of f of x dx from a to b. Okay, so don't forget that this is your delta x and your x sub i is this. Okay. So, uh, uh, a few things to add regarding finding the area under the curve or the Riemann curves or the integral. If your function is above the x-axis, you know, the positive, uh, sorry, not positive, but in general, then above the x-axis, the area form will be positive. If it is below the, the x-axis, the area should be negative. So it is possible that they will cancel out. Even though you have an area, it could cancel to zero or it could be negative. Okay? So let's try doing this problem and let's try calculating the Riemann sum. So evaluate the area using the Riemann sum, use n squared to 4. So we have a given function. 
x squared. Actually, this should be on the x. I forgot to write this down. Uh, so the limit here, a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 2. Therefore, we have this a and this b. Simply, you know. But how do we graph a function? It depends on you. you know? uh, but what we could do here, since the interest or the points of interest are 1 and 2, we could just substitute 1 and 2 here. So the x is equal to 1. At x is equal to 1, 1 squared is equal to 1. So this is the first point. And when uh, 2 is equal to x or x equal to 2, uh, this function will be 2 squared. So we have 4. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So this will be your graph, something like this. So next is 2. And the area that we're interested in is this region. So how do we utilize the Riemann sum? Okay. So the area will be equal to, so I will just notate this as a sub r, as in uh, area using the Riemann function, the Riemann sum. So this is just the summation from i is equal to 1 to n is equal to 4 of f of x sub i dx, adult x. So they, therefore, a r is equal to f of x sub 1 delta x plus f of x sub 2 delta x and so on. No? until m of x sub 4. Okay, so what is delta x? We want to figure out what is delta x and what are the m of x sub 1s and x sub 2s and x sub 3s. So let's tabulate our solution. We have to first find delta x. So delta x is equal to b minus a over n. So we know already the n, we know the b, we know the a. So this is equal to 2 minus 1 over 4, so our delta x will be 1 half. Okay, now how do we find f of x sub 1? So for x sub 1, okay, let's visualize this x sub 1. So we could divide this by 4, basically when n is equal to 4. So we could create some rectangles here. Let's make this smaller. See, this is the first rectangle, the second rectangle third rectangle and I'm sorry, the top words for only at this point. Right here. Okay, so this is our four rectangles. We have four rectangles here that we want to find the area of. So to find this first point, this first point here and the second point here and the third point here and the fourth point here. So for the first point, uh, x sub 1 will be this, this time. So this is x sub 1 which is equal to a. So a natin is 1, so therefore this is just 1. And then x sub 2 will be, we will be just adding delta x here, right? So x sub 2 will be 1 half, or sorry, this should be 1 fourth, right? My, my bad, no? This should be 1 fourth. So this will be 1.25 and uh, adding, we, we just keep adding 0.25 or 1 fourth to get for x sub 3 and x sub 4. Okay, so okay now. So we just want to evaluate this function at uh, at this values of x. So let's substitute this uh, function. So the function is x squared. Therefore, this will be one squared times that x. So times one fourth, or let's just say point two five, and then plus we have one point two five squared. 0.25 plus 1.25 squared, sorry, 1.5 squared times 0.25, and then plus 1.75 times 0.25. This should be squared. So, one thing to do here, you can factor out to make things easier, you know. So, we have 1 squared plus 1.25 squared plus 1.5 squared plus 1.75 squared multiplied by 0 0.25. So, so using your calculator, you can find the Riemann sum. Okay, our calculator is here. So this will be, we have uh, one, uh, 1 squared plus 1.25 squared 
plus uh, sorry, plus 1.5 squared plus uh, 1.75. You forgot the, uh, the parentheses. Multiplied by 0.25. So the Riemann sum that you can calculate here is 1.969. Okay, I will just round this off. We don't need to round this off. So 1.96875. So this is our approximate area. Now in unit square, if uh, not explicitly, uh, if the unit is not explicitly shown. But uh, to compare this with the actual area, we can actually find actual area here using integrals. And if we evaluate the true, the true integral, or sorry, the true area using the integral, which is from one to two of x squared dx, okay, that is basically just or you can just utilize an algorithm for now. So we have a function here for integrals. We have this. So we just input here 2 and uh, 1. And then we have x squared. Alpha x squared. So this is 7 over 3 or 2.33. We have 2.33 uh, not terminating. So as you can see here, this is similar or at least close enough. As an approximation, imagine if you can divide this uh, this region into a higher number under than four, it will get closer and closer to this value. So let's visualize this again. No? Let's compute. Uh, sorry, uh, let's compute for the area of x squared using the Riemann sum. So as you can see here, we have an uh, answer of uh, we have a uh, from 1 to 2 only. So we have an answer of 1.80. But 1.87. So the true area is 2.33. Okay, if we add more and more rectangles, or we divide this infinitesimally, we will achieve a closer value of the area. Okay. So uh, I hope there are no questions. We can move on to the fundamental theorem of calculus. So, uh, where is it? This is area. Okay. Oh, sorry. So, uh, I think this is the end for now. I will continue my lecture for the next video. Thank you guys.